Good evening and welcome yet again. Here we go again. MRC back at Baku. It's the elite's turn. The t the highest tier of the of this league. Not minimal assists. And then a track like this, this is going to be very interesting indeed. Depend as well if we if the race stays dry. We've had a little bit of weather, if I'm not mistaken, a few before in this track. But this is set for yet another classic. The the, the, the experts had a go. Now it's on to the top, the the best of the best. But tonight, joining me, the man who took two commentating races, two, took two races in the commentary box on Leeds last week in Spain, it's Mr. Carl Edens. How are you, sir? Not too bad. Straight out of um, Mercedes hospitality into this cramped commentary box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a... Uh... Struggled towards the end in a uh, elite earlier. Oh, it's Sorry, expert, expert earlier. Yes, we'll yeah. Trying to get those hard ties to the end was an absolute nightmare, especially when you're just holding out for possible another safety car, but never comes. So. Yeah. Yeah. You said about weather here before in the past. Funnily enough, um, both the top two tiers ended up having wet race at some point there was rain at some point in the race because uh expert as it's called now tier which used to be tier two we had a full race on intermediate conditions and elite which was formerly known as tier one had a dry start but ended in wet conditions so right, okay. we've had rain here in the past so there's a bit of uh mrc history for you Love to hear it. And uh, just looking at the YouTube chat, uh, both Mark Hutchin and LRL are both saying that there is a possibility of a wet race. Ooh. So I shouldn't have just... said anything before the stream. <laughs> <laughs> You've jinxed it. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> well, first man out on track, the current leader of elites, Mr. Damiano. You, Johnny. Indeed, in his coveted Ferrari seat, as usual. I swear his imprint is probably on that in that seat now. <laughs> he bleeds Ferrari. He's Italian, so yeah, it exactly. makes sense. But you've driven the track, and we're going to ride on board. Ricky Juni, if you would like to take us for a lap of Baku. Uh, yes, uh, long run down towards turn one where, funnily enough, Ricardo and Verstappen came together back in 2018. Then you're breaking about 100 metres or so for turn two, and then you're activating DRS out of the corner. Then it's a straight run down towards turn three, breaking between 150 and 100 getting as close to the apex as possible then into four trying and getting close to the wall on exit not to hit it then you break about halfway between 150 for turns five and six then you're getting the power down for the tight corner of turn seven bounces across the curb a little bit very close to the wall then you got turns 8, 9 and 10 of the castle section. Then turn 12, you get on the power, flat out. The kink of 13 right here where Grosjean puts it in the wall, I think, under safety car. Breaking around about there for turn 15. Then straight run 100 metres for turn 16. Power down. Then through the high speed, left right, 18 and 19. Try not to hit the wall and exit. Then turn 20 and then it's flat out all the way. DRS open to the start finish line to end the lap. 
and the journey sets a 140.8 to get us going which is ridiculously there's, fast yep there's the benchmark he did have a wee bit of a contact with the wall I did see at turn 15. Yeah, he was getting very close to the wall on exits, using as much of the track as he dares. Yep, he did have a wee bit of contact. We've got a few more drivers coming towards the line. First one across the line will be a Haas. That's going to be Europel, who's back down to his lap. So who's next across That's the line? Already quicker than the pole from earlier, because the pole in tier to our expert was a 41 so already significantly faster than what we were doing there by you journey which is no surprise nope not at all even without the assists he doesn't even he doesn't know what assists are <laughs> look at the lap times that are being put in no one is anywhere close to him and if that's a banker, then I'm scared. Exactly, I know it. To be honest, watching that first lap, I know he has more time than it. As I say, around this corner where he is now, he did hit the wall on exit. Let's see who's next. Era voice, Fabian. Let's see what he can do. As a race with him, put him to P3. Fabian with a 142.9. Quite steady bankers from uh, a lot of the guys at the moment. Just got yeah. a feel for the track. Exactly, no one's pushing it too hard to start off on him. I already know from uh, down at Mercedes, because I did it, uh, Ant is um, probably going to be looking at saving tyres and looking to not qualify which is no surprise really he's uh, he's not fond of qualifying at times and tends to either qualify at back or just not do any laps at all Jimmy Hornet's not on a lap at the moment I think he might be either going double warm up or he's just made a mistake on his lap obviously on as a stand in he is of course a um, comp tier driver so he's up two tiers yeah. throwing in throwing well, in the no. big lots got no wing so oh I didn't even see that <laughs> yeah he's got no wing so he's taking it cautiously back to the pits so that's, uh, that's one on the wing count and we're not even into the race yet and that's one of many LRL pitches across the line in P15 the slowest out of them all so far must have had a wee bit of a mistake on his lap and even else on the lap so straight away Eugenie is literally as <laughs> I'm, as you say, I'm worried to see what his uh, laps are going to be like as a, when he goes full flat out, if that's his banker. Only time will tell, because he's, he's come in and he's uh, straight back out again. He is indeed. Oh, oh he bit... slightly missed his break point, yeah. kept it out the wall though. Luckily, he's only on a on an out lap. Uh, yeah, but if he loses his wing, then that's his oh, uh, yeah. wasted, and that's a tire, set of tires wasted. And a driver of his uh, calibre in this league definitely would be embarrassing yeah, for somebody like him. I 100% agree with you there. But before we keep an eye on him, Europel started his lap, so let's have a wee ride right on board with him while he comes through turn three. Well, not right on board, we'll just watch him through his lap. <laughs> Rather. <laughs> yeah, he's keeping it nice and tidy. Obviously, it's his first lap, so not going to be taking too much. I tell you what, though, before... Sorry to interrupt you, but uh, Saviour's just put it into P2. He yeah. was P3 before that, so he's just improved on his lap yeah. again. 42-0, not that much ahead of uh, Jules, who was also on a 42-0. Not much separating those two. No, at all. But at the same time, I'm still... Sure, Sorry, I'm sure we'll get at least a 41 from some of these oh, yeah, at some so. point when they decide to absolutely give it full beans. Oh, I think Eugenie's had a mistake in the castle section. 
There's Ferrari a Ferrari there. there. No, it's not. It's uh, the nice. other Ferrari. It's uh, Red Car Rambo. Has had a moment He's... in the castle section. He tends to favour street tracks, but the lack of grip here in Baku. Um, you repel up to P11. He tends to struggle a little bit. But he's usually very strong when it comes to street tracks, his uh, red car ramble. Mm. Singapore comes to mind. Loves right, his okay. Singapore. <laughs> Excuse me, Eugenie coming through the middle sector now. I think G Star Snipes is about to finish his lap though in the Red Bull. Up to the line yeah, he goes. He's... Pops Ooh. into P2. Very Again, nice. Another forty-two zero. Again, no one getting close to Eugene. He's just gone purple in the second sector. He's went. He's three, nearly three tenths up. Wow. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Because I knew he made a mistake at turn fifteen. So he knew. I knew he had him. He had time in that lap. But this is just insane. Up to the line. What's he gonna do? Taking Takes the, the shortest route. run as well, 40.4, <laughs> he's took it three tenths off of his back, off his first lap. That is just scurry pace, frightening pace. As Chaos Druid says in the, as Chaos Druid says in the YouTube chat. <laughs> oh, you very Joan, no, this, this is no disrespect to Eugenie, because obviously Ferrari and all that, but Eugenie is our Max Verstappen. <laughs> Hands down, Eugenie is our Max Verstappen. 100%. Couple of drivers in the uh, escape road at turn 3, which is a very yeah, popular you, location at the moment. Eugenie's one of them. It's it's not too bad to overcook and go through the runoff in uh, the exits of uh, like 2, 1, 2, 3 and 4 because it allows cars to go through unimpeded but it True. is a pain to get the to s turn the car back round without taking too much out the tires just watching here baby hornet can't catch a break on his lap at the moment he's got drivers overtaking him while on the lap i mean fair play to to him to uh stepping in exactly to be fair yeah he's obviously never with... driven I don't think he's ever driven without ABS. Um, I think uh, I think he took part in a race or two when we ran no assist because we ran two no assist race races at some point just to entice people to give in it a go. I mean, I did one of them and uh, sure didn't I... do too badly I... until I put it into a wall. <laughs> I can't remember if I've tried it. Uh... No assist race myself, if I'm being honest. And I would be scared too. Because <laughs> even running no traction would be difficult for me, rather than, never mind, no ABS. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to the no traction, it's it's about feeling where the grip is. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, I run no traction, but I still ain't got the confidence to put me, put the power down early yeah fair enough some loads of drivers going still quite slowly through the middle sector don't know if anything's glitched or not or if drivers are literally just taking their time through but i tell you what what uh so far qualifying dumbest hornets sitting in p5 he's not yeah, had dumbest, much luck yeah. this season not much i mean we have got a few 41s in now from other drivers so, gaps come down a little bit more to your journey, but not by much. Yeah, uh, just uh, forgot to mention as well, of course, um, two brothers racing in the same tier for the first time in a long time. Dumbest Hornet and Baby yep. Hornet. Yep. The brothers of... The older, sorry? Dumbest the older, older of the two, Chris, which is uh, Dumbest, Chris, and then you got yep. Simon, which is Baby Hornet. Indeed. Always, always a rivalry between them two. Oh, sibling rivalry, it's... There it has to be. Oh, yeah. 
I'm just watching uh, B17 on his lap. He does run no assists in in uh, experts, so oh, he yes, should he's... know what he's uh, he should know what he's doing. Of course, another stand-in for the night. Totally forgot yeah. about that. Um, just a quick one. Shout out to Bergen, who's uh, racing tonight on a different wheel today. So he's getting used to that. All right, okay. Yeah, he got a new wheel at the weekend, so love it. Trying to bed that in and find where he's comfortable. Things you love to see. And yeah. uh, Red Car Rambo also on a new wheel as well, so bedding that in tonight as well. So we've got two people on two new bits of equipment tonight. Love to hear it. Obviously, Saviour as well. Not quite recently, got himself a new wheel as well. Oh, he was a controller driver for Saviour, which is crazy to think. Mm. Us pad users, like myself, we're practically a dying breed in a way, because um, for the full simulation and effect of racing, yeah, you practically got to go for a wheel and set up. Yeah. To get the full immersion of it. B17 up to the line, 44.6. Anton puts in a 2 minute 20. What a lap. Yeah, he's. Uh, Him and his intermediates. Yeah, doing ant things is uh, Calvin. I think it's called it a day in the pit lane. Yep. Let's see if Eugenie is going to improve again. again. He's straight away up by, a te by half a tenth out of the first sector. Have a wee bit of traffic in front of him though. Look at how congested the second and third sector is. Yeah, and it's, it's not the best, easier places to let people through around um, the old um, part of the city compared to the first couple parts of the track, which are in the newer part of the city. Fair enough. Yeah, I can agree 100%. It's... Because of how tight, because of how tight the turns are. Hmm. I mean, look at that! Look the... at that! Eugenie's up by three tenths. Could we possibly see a thirty-nine? I was just about to say that we could be possibly on for her one thirty-nine. It's gonna be close. And he's got a wee. I don't know if he's got a little bit of uh, toe from the drivers in front. Maybe no, two. he's got no toe from cars in front. Forty point two. He lost a bit it's in the last the second. Tenth off. That is just crazy pace. He's nearly a second faster than second place. That is scary. <laughs> uh, check and flag as well. So session's finished. So everyone getting their last runs in. Yep. Let's see, Chris Bailey's out on the lap of the one, currently in P4, the blowhole himself. Did he connect with that wall? I didn't set them. Uh, no. He's up by a he tenth. If he did, it was very, very small, Minor, yeah, but it did don't... look like it, or he was just quick to, quick on moving away from it. He's up by a tenth in the first sector. He needs to gain a, about another eight to try and have a chance at pull. You repel with a decent lap up to P6. He's going to be looking more the front Save, row. Savior up to the line. On his lap, he goes up to P6. Drops your repel. G Star snipes the P5. While we'll we right on board with the Mercedes driver of Chris Bailey. Yeah, he's purple in the middle sector. He's five tenths up. Needs to gain this a is lot more to go a through. Very but good finish. Hundred percent. A very good finish to the lap. This will put him on the front row. But is he going to be anywhere near that Eugenie time? How close can he get? Let's see. A one forty-one point one. He lost a lot of time in the last sector. He's running um, quite high downforce. If he's lost that much time on the straight. These are Suze Knight's done, as is Ray Carambo, and I think as is Bergen's. So that's the grid. For Baku Eugenie has made a statement there, big time. 
A 140.2 from the Italian driver. Well, that's easily going to be the fastest lap of the uh, the week. 100%. Goodness me, what a lap. I can't get over that. <laughs> Almost how? a second. That's, that's, that's all I can ask, how? How does he do it? Probably plenty of practice, probably. <laughs> but even still, almost a second faster than the man sitting in second place. Yeah. I mean, f what was it? 40.8 he did on his very first run. Exactly. And then he improved. And he and took the it down two. to a 40.2, so he took about... Just over half a second. Four, yeah. Off of his first run. <laughs> Mental. It is indeed. So then, the grid for uh, the the elite Azerbaijan Grand Prix is as follows. We have Eugenie on pole by a landslide to Jules in second place. Reese Whitcomb in P3. We've got Chris Bailey in P4. G-Star Snipes in P5. Chaddy Duck is in P6. Dumas Hornet in P7. Xavier is in P8. Yura Pell is in P9. He and Kieser Soze rounds out the top 10, followed by LRL in P11. BRD Calvin in P12, Red Car Rambo in P13, Lobby is in P14, Era Voices in P15, Alex Sajeric in P16, Bergen in P17, B17 in P18, Baby Hornet in P19, and Anton will start from the back of the grid. So then, it's kind of a stupid question, but do you have a uh, race uh, prediction? <laughs> um, oh! oh. Do you have a prediction? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, well. Um, Hello, ooh, it's wet those, in the Those race. that are probably running a higher downforce or whatever probably done in the that rain are going to be benefit fair. here. This is going to be a real test for these boys in this race with the rain. I mean, I know I said that um, we need a bit of rain to test the top guys yep, in, the, in the league. <laughs> I wish I didn't say anything now. <laughs> Everyone's going to be at you in the chat later. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can see it in Discord now. Pitchforks and torches. <laughs> I may not even make it back to Mercedes Hospitality. <laughs> I'll probably so, have Chris and Ant waiting for me with pitchforks and torches. <laughs> this is going to be very interesting now. Again, you haven't answered yet. Have you got a prediction? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to look past you, Joni, but with this rain, anything can happen because you could have people that are fast in the dry but don't feel comfortable in the wet you got those that are balanced you got those that are good in the wet but not in the dry so it really does mix things up it's a, it's a neutralizer the uh, the rain in a way it neutralizes <laughs> those that are strong in the dry and you've just brings given me a thought up. there as well mm -hmm. you've just given me a thought in regards to you Joni that lap in cool. qualifying what was his mm -hmm. setup? Is, did he go for a dry setup or was that a wet setup with that lap time? If he did that on a wet setup, then. I was going to say, you would think it was on a dry setup. But at the same time, it's hard to say. It probably would be hard to say until he says it himself. Mm. But of course, now this is the uh, five minute break before the race itself. So we get a wee bit of time to breathe and uh, drivers get a bit of time to prepare themselves. Especially with the rain. But the question is, is it all the way through or are we going to have a dry period towards the end? That's, That's the, question. the question. That is the question. So, indeed. yeah, so drivers are going to be looking at the weather forecast uh, whilst working on setups and fuel levels I can guarantee near enough everybody on the grid is going to be most likely under fueling because of the rain and possibility of safety cars so there's going to be most of the people under fueling 
Hundred percent. I would say we all underfueled in uh, expert earlier. All right. Okay. I think I started with the uh, only 0 0.5 under fuel and I was already practically a lap over before I think it was lap 3 or something because we had a safety car very early on see that's to be honest if uh, for me if I'm being honest that's just I'm not, I'm not going to mention the driver that brought it out for his own well being because he wouldn't want it bringing up What's that? He knows. He knows who. He knows. He knows. So I'm not gonna say his name. Fair enough. Because he is in the YouTube chat as well. So uh, I'll leave that. Ah, right. Okay. I can maybe yeah. guess. <laughs> <laughs> I can probably guess. The 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 weird thing is though, a couple of day ago, Sarge said about an Aston Martin bringing a safety car out. Hmm. He didn't name which one, though. Dean Lawrence in the green YouTube chat, of course. Uh, not racing tonight. He would have been in this race. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there You've we seen it. Go. <laughs> I am a wanted man tonight. On yes. So many sides. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh dear. Love it. <laughs> I don't. I don't do myself any favors, do I? No, no, apparently not. Well, we're no. apparently good to start racing here. So, drivers finishing up their setups. This the uh, two minute break has, or not the two minute, five minute break has gone. Swaying for the, the lights timer. now to start the formation lap. Here we oh, go. Here we go, yep. Look at that track. That is uh, <laughs> pretty wet. I don't like that. There's a driver that is... Uh, is it just me or was there a driver there that was ghosted? Uh, there is, yes. Uh, there's a uh, the Alphataria of Jules. He's a ghost. I wonder if he paused, either paused the game or if he's just left, ended up... Well, we've got a ghosted, uh, yeah, Alpha Tari, as you say. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, as I say, Eugenie has made a, a big statement from that qualifying. He's obviously fresh off a victory in Spain, getting maximum points. With the winning fastest lap. Mm. Don't need to worry about tyres. Everybody on intermediates, as you could probably guess. <laughs> yep, of course. That uh, and obviously the uh, one, the one stop or the tyre. What's the word I'm trying to think of here? The rule of the tyre um, change. Yeah, there's no compound tyre pitch stop with uh, the, the wet race start. <laughs> Thank you for that. Can't get my words out. <laughs> Don't have to worry about two di using two different sets of compounds. That's what I was trying that to say. That rule has gone out the window with this wet start. 100%. That's what I was trying to say. Just can't get my words out. I've had a long damn work. <laughs> as, a, as a Mercedes driver this season, I would really like to see the two Mercedes boys have a solid race so that's Chris and Ant or my reds in the chat first time I've seen him in the YouTube chat since he's joined the league that's the yeah, fellow he, my fellow um... Irishman <laughs> oh yeah Arma is a, a county of Northern Ireland ah fun fact for you there so we finally have two play two drivers in the league from Northern Ireland so we've got two le two northern leprechauns there. No, I was waiting on that. <laughs> <laughs> Funnily enough, I knew you were on comms because I could see a rainbow coming out of the comms box. <laughs> You're not having anything for gold, though. <laughs> <laughs> How's he in the YouTube chat as well? A couple of new, new, couple of new faces in the YouTube chat. Supporting Jules yeah. for the night. 
Yeah. Or my red has the same uh, have the same thought as me. I wonder if that quality lap was in a wet setup. We'll find out, but no, we will indeed. You Joni skill it. I'm just we'll scared to know. see. You probably probably hide it. I'm just scared to see what the uh, spray is going to be like off the line here going into turn oh, one. Oh, it's it's. I can tell you now, it's going to be absolutely horrible. Those towards the back of the grid aren't going to see a dicky bird. Well, here we go. The grid has formed up. The game is going to do its quick thing. But here come the lights. Four, five lights are up. Third, twenty-six laps are ahead. And we are racing. Everyone's going to crawl off the line from the start. And Eugenie gets a brilliant launch, as does Reese Whitcomb into turn one. G-Star Snipes has a brilliant launch side by side with Chris Bailey. There's another driver side by side at the back of the Ooh, or further back of a spinner. The That's Baby Hornet. And there's a uh, Aston Martin's round deep into turn two. As that's, well, I think uh, that's Dunless Dunless Hornet. Hornet. Both the Hornets having a mare at the start. Not a good start for the two for the two Pratts. Jules up to P5 at the moment from the start. Eugenie and Reese Wickham looking to disappear away from the other two. Oh, that's uh, Alpine in the wall. That looks like might it be Chatty Duck, is it? Uh, yes, that is Chatty Duck. Lost the B. car out of turn three. Looks like B17's lost out of turn four, at turn five as well. Yeah, so B17 nah. dropped to the back now, yeah. Oh, Eugenie's had a wee bit of a moment towards the castle section. Reese Whitcomb says, thank you very much. I'll take the lead off you. And we have a virtual safety car. I think Baby Hornet's lost his front wing. He's had another moment into the... I think it's turn six or seven, but yep. Baby Hornet has no front wing in the front of his car. So, luckily, it's uh, virtual, so... This was the same as what... We're losing too much time. Question is though, how long will the virtual stay out? Was oh, you Joni getting a bit of the back end stepping out as he tries not to hit the back of Reese under the virtual. My cousin in the chat, they say bees and hornets don't like the wet weather. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of duck weather. It's more of duck weather, even though Chatty Duck hasn't really had much fun either so far. Well, it's obviously that they don't uh, not good for ducks either then. Nope. So Valerie Bottas was wrong. <laughs> Still under virtual. Yep, uh, Reese this was doing a bit of weaving to keep a bit of heat into the inters. As I was saying there, it's a bit similar as what happened in um, X on Friday night. It was. It wasn't. Uh, there was a lot of virtual safety cars. There was, I think, two virtuals and two full safety cars, so. Yeah. We had a couple of virtuals I think in the sprint as well as we've gone back green yep and B17's opted to retire in the pit lane it looks probably damage to the rear or something on the car that uh, would affect him throughout the race so he thought it'd be best to call it a night oh, of course it is <laughs> of course it is Mark Mark's on the rum. Mark's on the rum. <laughs> As you would expect. I, was... I wouldn't have thought of anything more, more anything less of you. Yeah. <laughs> Wonder what would happen if you actually steal rum from Mark. I would There's be scared to know that him. answer. <laughs> <laughs> Probably find out. <laughs> I would be scared to know what that. What I would be scared to know that answer. Reese is uh, getting a. Decent move on. He is alright, he's left about Eugenie nine, behind a wee bit. Nine tenths up the road from Eugenie. He is indeed. Which, uh, but... Both of them about second or so ahead of uh, G Star. He's indeed, got Chris Bailey for company. He has alright, and uh, Europel is, all, is practically pushing Jules around the third sector. Down in P5 and 6. LRL has got past Kieser Soze before turn. Was that 16? Oh, we bit of contact it looked like between Kieser and LRL, but both are still both kept it clean. The Europel has a brilliant run on Jules out of the final chicane, and it's a long run to turn one, the longest run, the longest straight of the calen of the F1 calendar. 
And Chris Bailey side by side with G-Star as well. And who's going to be later on the brakes? It's Red Bull against Mercedes at Baku. And we know what happened the last time they've this happened. Chris on the outside, but uh, gets the move done. Sorry, all you Lewis Hamilton fans in the YouTube chat for that. <laughs> Same, we know what happened last <laughs> we know what happened last time, but uh, Mercedes and Red Bull fought at Baku. <laughs> oh don't worry, I've got my running shoes on Mark, don't worry. <laughs> You're already in the run. <laughs> I've got my running shoes on Red. <laughs> he uh, wouldn't do anything to me anyway if it was me. He knows better. <laughs> Reese looks so much comfortable in the corner, so my guess he's definitely running a higher downforce setup than what you, Joni, is. Because he was about a second, a, just over a second um, going on to the straight, but then you, Joni, would pull it in. So you, Joni, obviously running a lower downforce setup than Reese. It does seem that way so far. I look, but look both at that, of them even two round. seconds ahead of Bailey and G Star behind. Of course, they have been fighting a wee bit as well. Chris has now got over a second mm. behind past G Star, so he's getting a bit more comfortable in the wet conditions, and he's actually catching you, Joni. Kaiser had a wee bit of a moment into turn 15 there, which is obviously going to be the corner that everyone is going to hit, especially in the wet, but. Look at how close, Eugenie's got a bit closer to Reese Wickham. But Not it does close. look like, uh, oh, 58-0 by Eugenie. Oh, oh, very, very late. Nearly went into the back of Reese there, so he had to make the avoiding action, which has allowed Chris to take second. And G-Star has got three as well on him. Yeah, Eugenie down to fourth. The overspeed on that straight, the toe is just so ridiculous. Yeah, indeed. That uh, Mandy's just uh, mentioned about the Lewis Hamilton moment, the magic button. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so let's have a wee look down the field then. We've got a few fights happening. We've got Chatty Duck on Alex Ajerik in the Alpine passing the McLaren. Nice move by... Mr. Neville Harris, another one of our fellow commentators, of course. And it's already up to 13th in these uh, wet conditions. Well, he's already done laps on into, so he should know <laughs> what the grit levels are like. True, that's very true, whether they be dry or wet. Evening, Andrew. Very good race from you earlier on, starting at the back of the grid along uh, with me as well. You started P20 and finished in the points. A solid race for oh, you. Brilliant result. Fair play, Andrew. Mm, the only Aston Martin to finish as well. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna. He is gonna find you. <laughs> he want. He he wants to really. He will really want to kill you at the end of this. I'm sure you are, Andrea. Driving Baku is not fun. I'm sure you are tired. It's mentally trying to make sure you uh, get the braking points right. So we have a yellow flag, which is Baby Hornet. My guess is uh, outbroke himself at turn four. Getting back <laughs> on track. G Star with a 57.9 uh, Saviour is side by side with Jules going down the back straight and we've got LRL uh, wanting to get involved a wee bit of contact between them both Jules tries to leave him a, enough room we're almost going three wide going towards turn two with LRL getting involved Saviour's going to get the higher, harder break in as Jules going to get the run LRL's going to have a run on Ooh, him we've got a virtual Jules. safety I car I think what it, that's been brought out for Who's the, someone find you have lost their wing? Uh, Baby Hornet is uh, missing a front wing. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> have you dip also? Did you see uh, Hodgie's message in the YouTube chat? Um, yes, I have. <laughs> You're out of a job. You're nearly out of a job. <laughs> Might as well go out with the bang. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, somebody did. 
<laughs> Sorry, Marge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Don't. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm just waiting on it now. <laughs> I'll cut it easy, all because you finished in the points. <laughs> I only got a point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rhys, three yeah, you... seconds up the road on his own at the moment. He is, he's loving this wet, these wet conditions at the moment, doesn't he? I've definitely got a target on my back now. <laughs> <laughs> Full caps as well, I'm, 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 I'm definitely not finishing Japan. I can see Mark <laughs> doing a full oh, center Oh, yellow flag in the middle turn. sector at turn 16. Uh, Alex Ajerik's lost a bit of his wing. Had a wee bit of a moment. I don't know if he missed his breaking point. So he's lost a bit of his uh, front wing. As Reese Whitcomb is catching up on Baby Hornet now. Look, it uh, could be close to lapping. The poor lad. You, Joni, does not look comfortable in these conditions. Mark, you're a couple of days too early for that. <laughs> <laughs> too much room. Um, yep. Got a very nice scrap for second, third, and fourth. With Doing day, which is a lion, Reese Wickham. Which is a lion, Reese Wickham, to disappear nearly five seconds between. Yeah, yeah he's in. definitely found his rhythm in the, in these conditions and got the setup just right. Mark Dennison uh, calling out the <laughs> uh, baby hornet in the chat. That's a wee bit aggressive from yourself, the hard mark. Just a bit. But fair play to Baby Hornet uh, stepping up and uh, having a crack. 100%. Eugenie seems to have backed away from uh, the front, the uh, second and third. Yeah. He's... The other Is flag in the Bull? second sector. Yeah, that's Baby Hornet. Oh, that's okay. Baby Hornet <laughs> round. Come on, Simon. You're better Keep than your this. Keep your head up, lad. Keep You're better your head than up. this. That's my oh, he's uh, skate into the escape road. There's a hash round as well. That be There's a hash round. That's a lobby. There's it. a contact as well with an Alpine. I think Ooh, it was. I think dear. Kieser had a wee bit of contact with him, as he couldn't avoid him. I don't think Kieser has any damage. I'm sure Lobby has. G Star not close enough to uh, make the move on Chris into turn one. What's that, sorry? Uh, G-Star not close enough to make a move or even trouble Chris at the moment, so... Just getting a face full of that Mercedes rear end. He can, probably can hardly see it with the major spray, but he's got a run on them here, is, has he? He's having a look, uh, Alex is Alex retired. Gone. And that's going to be a full course safety car. Yeah, full safety car. He's gone out of uh, turn 19, looking at the trap map. Oh, he has. Someone, I thought I'd seen uh, had someone gone straight on at the halves. Reese Wickham. Reese Wickham went straight on at uh, turn three. Wow. I completely. So I was. I thought it was uh, Alex Jericho who went straight on at turn three, but no, Reese. Reese down to fourth, so that's put Chris in the lead with G Star second and Eugenie third. That has just thrown his banner into the works. So do you box if you're the leaders? Or if it does anyone box at this point and get a fresh set of Vinters on? I think most of them will probably... Uh, the front few will probably stay out. Those towards the back will probably look at pitting for a fresh set. That A lot, a lot happened in that one second. So Alex, as you say, yes, lost it. It was it out of the last chicane. Hit the wall on the exit of 19. And then as we, as, as that happened, uh, I was about to say there is a yellow flag in the first sector because it was, but I didn't realise it was Reese Wickham no, out of turn was four way or turn up the three road, rather. So you wouldn't you wouldn't have thought he'd make a mistake with uh, how far up the road he was. 
No, it didn't even re it didn't even click to me that it was an Aston Martin either. So that really threw me off. I was gonna say something, but I'm not. <laughs> Simon's getting uh, baby Hornet's getting <laughs> getting outed in the YouTube chat. What's he saying that for? <laughs> Don't you dare. What, what did you say? <laughs> I, said, I was going to say some of the words. Oh, okay. Every, it looks like everyone's... Oh, Calvin's staying out, so Calvin's going to... Oh, here. Baby Hornet lost it out of the chicane. And he's out. Mark, you jinxed him. <laughs> Ant stays out, so... Everyone's pitted so far by Calvin and Ant have stayed out. Chatty Duck and Keezer have as well as have Bergen. Red car stays out as well. Your voice has box. So yeah, there's still a few drivers that haven't decided to box. Both and uh, massively, both Aston, both uh, Al not Aston, Alfa Romeos haven't boxed. So that could be a wee bit of a issue with pit with pitting. Well, I do I do know Bergen and Calvin are both in a chat together, so they're probably ah, right, communicating okay. about it and vice versa. Funnily enough, they're in the same party along with Chris and Ant as well, and uh, Red Car as well. Those are in a little group together, which I'm in as well. So there's going to be plenty of communication amongst those. Okay, fair enough. You guys are really just out for uh, baby Hor uh, for Simon tonight in the chat. <laughs> so it went at from Carl taking the taking least, the mic out. At of... least he lasted longer than Mark did. Let's put it that way. I was, <laughs> I was just about to say I'll I was started off. I'll stick up for him. I'll stick up for him. <laughs> I was just about to say it started with you taking the mic out of Hodgie, but now you've continued it. <laughs> I'll stick up for Simon. <laughs> I'm just waiting on the message. Mind you, I'm giving it all the bees knees, but I already got a point. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, well, it's still a point. It's still a point. A point is a point. Keeps me point scoring going, and also... Indeed. The points tally for the team as well. Both me and Fox scoring points again. Yep, so and from that that's mistaken, a Fox nice one for the constructors. And Pretty sure Fox finished in the podium places again, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm? If uh, Fox finished in the podium places, if I'm not mistaken. If I heard correctly, or... I think Fox finished P2 yeah, earlier on tonight. Let me get me book out, Mark. I should be able to find <laughs> it somehow. Your history book? <laughs> Hodgie Hall, because you won two races back. <laughs> I can't Absolutely. say that I got. I can't say that I won a title before Mark, because we both won our first titles at the same in the same season. He who won, won it earlier. Um, in the, who he won, won earlier in the MRCX uh, Elite when I won MRCX Challenger in the same season. I think right, that okay. was. I think that was season six, if my memory serves me correct. I'm not 100% sure. That, that, will have, that was well before I rejoined this league. Yeah, because you took a bit of a hiatus. I did yeah, indeed. It, it was five, five or six, like uh, Mark says. Yeah, I did so take I, away I the can't, I can't use I can't use that against him because we both won a title <laughs> in, the, in the same season. So, but then again, he went and won two more. True. And I ended up joining back a few seasons later. Have no and haven't looked back since. I'm happy to be back. This time on the commentary box as well as racing. So I'm not. Complaining whatsoever.
There's been a few, there has been a few drivers that have taken a wee hiatus away from the league. As well. There's uh, personal reasons and vice versa and yeah, stuff like personal that. Personal reasons, work reasons, which mm. was why myself yeah. ended up leaving. Here we go, safety car in. But yep, safety car back in this lap. BRD Calvin is going to lead us away for it. It's a Mercedes 2-3 at the moment, by the way, as well. Well, technically it was a Mercedes 1-2-3. Uh, two, th uh, if you take Calvin out of the equation because of the uh, safety car so it'd be a 1-3-4 if you include the safety car because it's a uh, Mercedes safety car for this oh, race right. okay I was wondering what you were on about <laughs> if it were Mark it'd You're be a Hyundai me. if it was Mark it'd be a Hyundai safety car <laughs> guaranteed <laughs> As, uh, Calvin's gone. Here we go. Calvin's on the restart. Yep, and uh, Chris has gone with him. There's been a good, a decent restart from the lot of them. There's a few moves happening down the field with Eugenie side by side with Reese Whitcomb into turn one. Reese has managed to get through. Everyone got away nice and cleanly looking at it, yep. Yep, no LRL has managed to get past Bergen. trip-ups. Kieser Soze gets past Reese Wickham. Reese has got Kieser. Or, that's what I meant, yep. Reese Wickham got Kieser, rather. Reese definitely looks the... Oh, is LRL's round? He took the escape LRL's road into turn all three. all the way down the order. Yep, he, indeed he has. Calvin... Seems to have got away well on Chris. He is also fighting away with Kiza. Yep, he's got three on him. Reese Whitcomb all over the back of G Star Snipes. Having on a bit of a recovery drive at the moment is Reese. He definitely looks the more comfortable in these conditions, does uh, Reese, because before he overshot and went down in a skate road, he was uh, a good handful of seconds up the road from the next car so obviously he looks the more confident in these conditions yeah, at this point 100% Chris catching up close getting closer to uh, Calvin gonna keep an eye on this wee battle for the lead of the race yeah Chris obviously on the fresher intermediates because he pitting under the safety car whereas yeah. Calvin decided mm -hmm. to stay out won the track position wanted to lead a race not a bad idea, especially in these conditions, so no DRS are out like that, so not and a bad idea to go well. for track position. Yep, Chris, let's see if he's going to get the move done. He's got the speed, and he's got the move done well before turn one. A brilliant move, and quite an as, easy move. Uh, Reese Rinkham's uh, making ground as well, he's up to P4. Was that a double overtake by Mr. Wickham? Near, near enough, he... Had to slot back in behind G-Star, but it was almost a double overtake by the Aston Martin. Brilliant move from him. And now Chris can set off into the distance while he knows that Reese Whitcomb has he's got four cars between him and Reese, including his teammates. So Chris is now going to get the hammer down and yeah, try and break that gap. Who was the car behind Chris when the pit stops happened? He's got uh, Calvin and Ant in front of him. Indeed, so Anton's going to play the... Which is a two-car buffer for Chris. Yep, he's going to play the ultimate team game, I'm sure, is Anton. Oh, like I say, there'll be plenty of communication between those two. Indeed, I think it was, if I can plenty remember... Plenty feedback as well. If I can remember last time, one of the races before, I think it was actually... I can't remember if it was Bahrain, but uh, them two giving it the toe to each other in qualifying. Not sure if you can remember a while back. Um, yeah, they're always playing uh, the team game, those two toes and whatnot, to help each other get that extra time, tenth or so, or whatever. It yeah. tends to mainly be Ant giving the toe, though. I have noticed that. Anton playing the ultimate team game. It's he good to see, though, as well. Russell. Indeed, it is good to see. Eugenie and Chatty Dog having a wee bit of a fight in the midfield. Ooh. Europeal getting on the back of the, that fight as well. And Eugenie's Eugenie going to get the move place, done. Yeah. Yep. Keeping tabs with uh, Reese Eugenie. He is alright. He's 
slowly getting the slowly getting his mojo in this tra on the, in the wet conditions. Got Eric as, Pell and Chatty Dog going side by side down towards turn one. As are we with uh, Anton and G Star. And G Star's going to get the move done on the Mercedes. So did uh, Irapel on Chatty Dock and Lorpy made a place on Dumbass Hornet just behind as well. And look at this, uh, Reese Whitcomb side by side at the moment with Anton as well. Reese is going yeah, to get the move Jody done. just behind that as well. He is indeed. Anton's fa falling down the grid at the moment on them um, 11 lap old intermediate tyres. So all the drivers on the, all the drivers that didn't box are being eaten alive by the fresher runners. Look how close G Star is to Kelvin. And look at the gap that Chris has, give, has, has gained. Yeah. Kelvin, the general cork in the bottle at the moment. Yep, indeed he is. I'll tell you what, oh, well, I've got three retirements, but only one of them is actually a no harm to the rest of them, but only one driver is elite. I say that as Red Car Rambo makes a mistake into... I think it's turn six or seven. That'll be turn five and six. Turn seven is where he is now. Oh, okay, right, okay. <laughs> Still trying to learn. <laughs> but look at the trailer of cars. Yeah, you've got a massive train of cars, and obviously because the light's flashing because of the wet conditions, when you see all the cars from the back of shot, it's like a f Christmas tree. <laughs> or a, or a runway. Because of all the red lights flashing on the back of the, the cars, as Chris is currently 4.8 seconds up the road, so Calvin is absolutely doing him a solid at the moment. But look at this, we're three wide going down the main straight between yeah. Reese, Calvin and G-Star. And then to turn one, his, who's going to be hitting it? It's a virtual safety car. What now is going to... Who, who was ahead of who? So, Who was ahead of who in that? Reese seems to be slowing down to allow G-Star through. Yeah, so my guess is, is G-Star was ahead of Reese before that virtual came out. If that virtual came out just a fraction later, I reckon Reese would have been in that position for second as Bergen pits or he's coming out of the pits now so he's pitting Probably for some fresh tyres it's actually quite a good move from Bergen to be fair under the virtual safety car not losing as much time well we're about half distance give or take as Keys has got a Keys drive through for speeding on the virtual yeah but that's uh, that was really quite a quick virtual safety car as well, and Chris. Yeah, is... it was quicker than some of some of them we've had tonight. Yeah, and Chris has basically has gained a bit more time on G Star as well out of it. So mm. at the moment, I think Reese Wickham is the only challenger for Chris at the moment. No harm to G Star, but I think Reese Wickham, if he can get past G Star, he's going to try and get that gap closed down as much as he can on Chris. Yeah, I think the, the fight at the moment that will probably be the one to keep an eye on is that one for second between G-Star and Reese because both of them were in that front three before the safety car and obviously the fresher intermediates. But judging by the way the performance has been so far, I can definitely say Reese is probably the more comfortable driver. Mind you, he got a bit twitchy out of turn 16. And obviously he has had a moment as well, obviously going straight on at the, into the escape rope. But look at, here we go, uh, for the battle for P4. Oh, Eugenie was looking at the, the inside. I think it was tur at turn 20 at, on uh, BRD Calvin. He is going to have a go now on him. Yeah, into he's going to look one, into, into turn, turn one. one. He's got the move done. Europel is going to try and have a move, look at Calvin as Ooh, well, which he has. close for comfort through turn one, but he's made the move. He has indeed, as oh, Xavier has got past Anton as well. Must have uh, got a bit on power, so Calvin's took the place back. Let's see if he can try it again then, Europel. He's not going to be close enough, I don't think. He's going to back out for the time Gap being. down to Chris is already 4.2. I wonder if Chris has had a wee bit of a moment then. Or is that just pure pace from G-Star, do you reckon? We'll find out, because 
it seems to drop but then build up again so my guess is Chris is the more always oh, keys is DNF'd I think that's turn in, one that's in the pit lane oh, it looks that, like a pit lane okay not good from him there there's a spinner at the back of the grid or there's a yellow flag at turn four I think that's, that's Bergen uh, Bergen I'll be Bergen in the Alfa Romeo well, here, tell you what, you mentioned about the gap, it's down to four seconds now, for Chris. Yeah, my guess is, is Chris gains a little bit in the corners, but on the straights, G-Star pulls it back in again. Quite possibly, but at the same time, so G-Star is Chris, getting... Sorry, go Chris ahead. obviously opens up in that castle section, but on the straights, G-Star brings it back in, it's 3.9, but the gap is coming down, and... He's bringing Reese and Eugenie with him. The other flag in the first sector, everything else, just Kieser Soze's car That's, put it out to uh, one side. Yeah, Kieser's retired car going off into the escape road. I was speaking a of a spinner flag. on its virgin, another oh, virtual well, safety car. That's Chatty Duck. Uh, Chatty Duck, so uh, obviously the wet is not good for ducks, as we no. figured out earlier on. 13 lap old tyres to be fair. Again, so Eugenie coming in for fresh inters and Calvin's taking Calvin. advantage of the virtual as well. As is Anton. Anton's coming so as well, yeah. That has helped them big time if I'm being uh, to be fair. That has helped them, dri them drivers on, the, on them tyres. Eugenie coming back out. P10. Error voice and uh, Chatty Ducks retired in the pit lane as well. Not good to see. From the, from that, not good to see if just all together. So it depends what damage or vice versa is on the car. So it's obviously if there's a rear damage to the rear wing or diffuser, obviously it's going to affect the uh, the handling of the car. So sometimes it's best to just park the car up in the, the pit lane and retire because the car just becomes a, a handful. Yeah, driving with uh, no rear wing is not fun. No. Well, I tell you what, after that virtual though, the gap between Chris and G-Star is down to two and a half. Yeah, it's gradually coming down, and as we know, G-Star's taking uh, Reese with him. So, could be looking at a three-way scrap for the lead at some point. Quite possibly. Thomas Horn in the lobby having a wee bit of a scrap down in the midfield. But at the moment, this seems to be one of the closest battles on track. There's maybe a battle for, between uh, LRL and Eugenie down in P9 and 10. you got Irapel and Saviour in a battle as well. But obviously, it's 1.9 now, so the gap is gradually coming down to Chris in front. Yep, them tyres must be starting to wear off. Wonder what's going off in that head of Chris Bailey right now, watching that Delta slowly come down. Bit by bit. Indeed, indeed. Is Saviour going to be quick enough to try and make a move on your repel? He's not close enough for the moment. However, Eugenie on LRL. This could be a move into turn one, but LRL is going to try and turn defence into attack on Lobby, I think. Look at how much... Look. Oh, Lobby's run wide and hit the wall. We're three wide going towards turn three. LRL and Eugenie still running side by side, going towards turn two, not turn three. Yeah, but Eugenie has got the move done. Lobby made a bit of a mistake into turn one, which allowed LRL and Eugenie to dance through past them and still run side by side. Oh, Eugenie turning back into a drifting circuit into turn th out of turn three. But manages um, to keep it clean. Yeah, still keeping an eye on the battle out front as G Star is just outside, has just got in a second of Chris Bailey. I know there's no DRS, but that, is that still... gap is gradually coming down. Yep, so as you say, we are up. To, I think you've got your wish. We do have a, a three way scrap for the race lead. Lap but 16 of 26. Is, with the gap that it's been coming down. Has Chris been nursing those intermediates while G-Star and Reese have been catching him? 
is the question we don't fully know 100% that's the question but at the same time Reese has backed off a wee bit from G-Star yeah, as well Reese is a second or so off of uh, G-Star oh yellow flag your uh, repels lost it out of the chicken gone turn 9 exit of turn 9 claims another victim it's not it's turn 16 it's the chicken or it's turn 18 it's the chicken yeah, 18, exit at 19. I think he said 19. 19. Sorry, mate, um, going deaf. <laughs> Jules decides to pit. But no safety car. Wee bit of a surprise As there. We have a yellow flag at the castle section. I think that's... Red car ramble, red car. It? Indeed it is, yes. Lobby and LRL having a wee bit of a scrap. The gap, Chris the has opened the gap up, so my guess is he was nursing those tyres and now he's gapping G Star and Reese. It's up to 2.1, so my guess he was watching those tyres and now he's. But as uh, Lobby's Lock retired, gone, so that's both Hasses have gone now. And still no safety car, turn Lobby. Turn three, turn three that is. For Indeed it is. Lopi. But again, no safety car has burnt my lander gone home. Has Bert gone home? My guess is, is uh, with the amount of safety cars in that we had in uh, the race earlier, it's probably run out of fuel. Or there's that. <laughs> no money in the meter. Another yellow flag in the first sector. That's uh, Bergen's missed his breaking point into the into turn three. He's took to the escape route. Uh, red cars in the pits. So possible damage from round about the castle section. Probably pulled a Charles Leclerc moment. He's went to the soft tyres. Bold. Bold move, if you Are ask we going to be getting a dry track, or is that just a mistake on his part? I don't know, because it doesn't look dry enough, and it's still raining. True. So it's a massive gamble by red car in the red car <laughs> and he's out of the pits behind the leaders Eugenie's put Eugenie. another fastest lap in mm. the grid has sort of uh, slow, uh, slowed it down a wee bit it's been fairly calm in the last couple of races in the last couple of laps the, the grid has uh, fairly spread out now yeah, 13 runners at the moment. Indeed. Well, if I can remember, if, my, if I can cast my mind back correctly, the last time MRC raced at this circuit a few seasons back, I think there was an average of maybe 12 finishers between all four tiers at the time. I think you're correct on that one. It was uh, quite a dreadful showing uh, for it was. In, uh, general for the league. Yeah. We better a bit more of an improvement this time round. How many finishers was there uh, in Challenger? Not Challenger, in Expert. If you can remember. Uh, to an extent, yes. I'm can just... Oh, you uh, only three seconds for track hmm. limits. That isn't something you do not see often. No. Red car put, uh, slowing down, letting the... The lead car through, yeah, he is definitely struggling on those dry tyres on this wet track. Indeed he is. Uh, Eugenie a wee bit closer, a wee bit of a twitch out of turn 16 as he gets closer to the MRC Elite Champion. The MRC Elite X Elite Champion, I should say. Uh, Saviour, so champion v champion on track at the moment. Obviously, you journey with the fresher inters because he pitted under that last virtual. And he has got back through, but he's got 11 seconds to try and catch Reese Whitcomb, who has been phenomenal under the wet conditions. Yeah, Dunbest has pitted. Yep, he will be going under the fresh set for his final run. As G Star has closed the gap yet again on Chris. Down to nine tenths. Eight tenths yeah. now between 
and Reese is uh, been left behind by the pair of them. Wonder if he's doing what Chris has done and uh, started to Probably. nurse his tires. Because look at the gap, Eugenie's closed in on Reese in the last yeah. lap. Nearly two seconds. Nine seconds. It's he's, down to nine point two. He's gained nearly two seconds in a la in about a space of maybe a lap or two. Yeah, difference in tire work. Oh, well, yeah, of course he's on fresher tires. Didn't think of that. Mm. <laughs> Reese just leaving the castle section. Eugenie just entering it. And that gap is really closing down. It's down to it's under eight seconds between. Eugenie and Reese. Yeah, 7.6 currently. So this is getting very tasty towards the end of this race. Seven laps to go here Ooh, at the Baku City Chris Circuit. Chris a bit twitchy out of turn 16, but kept it pointing the same, the right direction. Yep, Chris currently leading. But Chris currently leading from Jeez Dar Snipes and then Reese Whitcomb, Eugenie in P4, but closing on on. Reese, Saviour in P5, Calvin in P6 with, B, with Anton in P7, LRL is in P8, Jules is in P9, and Dumbest Hornet is going to round out the top 10 for the moment. So, 30, as you said earlier, 13 runners left. So, Gideon finishing Coot. He is just Time's flying on the coming down gradually. Oh, a wee bit of a twitch at turn one. Oh, got a yellow flag. Got, that uh, is Red Carla in. Yep. The lead cars through. So he's now officially a lap down his red car ramble, but fair play to him for keeping going. As LRL for is... some fresh intermediates. Yep. So coming towards the end of this race, are we gonna see a battle for the lead between G Star and Chris or even the legs of Eugenie? Could be mm -hmm. as Red Excuse Car me. decides to come back in again, so my guess is he's going back onto a set of intermediates. Yeah, you'd like to think so. Wonder, I don't know what his head was at, thinking putting on the soft tires. No, he's put a fresh set on. He's put a fresh set on. Yeah. A fresh set of soft and tires. A new, and a new front wing as well. Oh, lovely. <laughs> so I think he's just having fun at this point now, his Red Car. Yeah. So they're nearly near so six. His men, his. I'm guessing his mentality is, or is he's got five seconds for crossing the pit exit line. I'm guessing his mentality is, even if he finishes, he could get points because we only need That's three true. retirements, which would put Red Car in the points. That is true. But the laps are going away. So, and the field starts spread, and everyone seems to gotten into a rhythm. That I don't think there's going to be that many mistakes made at this point now. Well, to be fair, Rambo has been in lapped by the whole field as well. Even Bergen, as Chris has a moment out of turn one. Wee bit twitchy. Them intermediate tires starting to struggle a wee bit. Perhaps as Eugenie has closed that gap down to four seconds. Yeah, it'd be just under four seconds now, between 3.9. Between him and Reese. So that is, cra yeah. again, that's just crazy pace. That's about three, four seconds from G Star and Chris. Yep, indeed. He's about, what, there's about six seconds from the lead, six, seven seconds from the lead, usually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's got five laps to catch him, cause, but there he is. He is in the uh, rear, he's in the mirrors of race so you can see that red car closing up yeah well as Bailey still got his rear full of red ball yep indeed and G star is closing through the middle sector this time as I think red car Rambo's had a bit of a moment red car struggling on those soft tires in these conditions as you'd expect but look how close G star is he is very close. Is he going to have the lead at the at into turn one? Because uh, that's gonna be, what he's holding he's out for. Definitely be looking at it. That's what this he's is the closest for. he's been for quite a while. Oh, There's, ooh, back end came out on exit, but he kept it. Yep, yeah, we bit we bit of drifting. That's uh, P 
push the gap away Just, from Chris again. Yeah, I've got a bit of breathing room now as Bailey. So G Star is going to have to wait yet another lap. So he yeah. got a wee bit too excited. Right, got Rambo back into the pits yet again. I think he's lost another front wing. Nope, oh, nope, he's up to retire. He's decided to retire as well. He's had enough. Twelve Ujoni runners two point, you journey two point two behind Reese at the moment, who's and also closed in. Yeah, but I'm about to mention on that. Yep. The two done. cars in front. Yeah, he hasn't done, Chris. This could be a four-way battle for the lead. Coming towards the end of the race. Because Lap if G Star, a twenty-six. If G Star can't get past Chris, this is a as this is allowing um, Reese to catch them. G Star is being held and practically being held up by Chris. Then yeah. And the, game, yet the, the benefit Chris has got is there's not that many overtaking spots here at uh, Baku. No, that's what I mean. Plus, Plus, you got the wet conditions as well, so it nullifies much overtaking spots. So, to really make the overtake, you've got to get an absolute fantastic run out of a corner. The Thomas Hornet has uh, gone straight on at turn three. Still sitting in the point at the moment is is Mr. Chris Pratt, which is, uh, no, this isn't any offence to him, but that isn't that's something that we've seen very often this season from him. Yeah, he's got 2.6 to LRL, as he's actually P9 now, he's got past Error Voice, so but he's look up at, to P9 now. Sorry to interrupt you. As, oh, he's oh, retired. Dumas Hornets retired. He's lost it into the castle section, seven. has he? Just out, no, just before yeah, it. Just before it turns seven. But look at this. We've got two two battles for uh, the podium places. G Star, G Star, right uh, Chris, Chris making him go around the long way. But look at Eugenie as well on Reese. Yeah. At the exact same time, so G Star has taken the lead, and Eugenie is up to P3. So with three laps to go in this race, as I think we've had another moment, and I think Era Voice has had a moment in the he has yeah. in the middle sector. Despite the wet conditions, it's really heating up between the top four. <laughs> so is Reese going to get close enough to try and make a move back on Eugenie, or is Eugenie going to try and close that gap? As Anton has got past Saviour in the middle, in this middle DRS, uh, middle well, DRS straight, but obviously no DRS. As it stands, this is going to be a great result for the Mercedes pairing. And we're just going to lose our eight. But at the same time, well, two laps to go. Anton's on fresh tyres. Could he close the gap on Calvin and get even more points for the Mercs? Just over, just under two seconds, the gap between those two. And closing. So look at this. Eugenie is Eugenie all over the back of Chris now. He is all right. So Eugenie. It's still on for a victory. Is struggling a little bit now. It seems like it. So even Reese could have a chance at the podium for the, at the moment. Yeah, he's not too far back as well. He's only having half a loop in the downhill break-in. But obviously thinking of better of it because that is not an overtaking spot on this circuit. Ferrari on Mercedes, reminiscence of uh, the battles between Hamilton and Vettel. Indeed, we've got uh, three different... Um, Constructors on the podium at the moment. G-Star, yeah, Chris, Bull, and Eugenie. Mercedes and Ferrari, and, and three different engine suppliers as well, because obviously Red Bull power trains here we go. Ferrari and Mercedes. Eugenie has got past Chris, so Eugenie back onto, back into the hunt for the race win. And also, and at the moment, if, if I'm not mistaken, it's three different, uh, three different uh, nationalities as well, on the podium. Or is G Star uh, English? Yes, uh, you got G Star. I think is Dutch. You got Eugenie, who's Italian, and obviously Chris is English British, with a bit indeed. of, uh, I think, a bit of African heritage or something, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> so he says. As Eugenie oh. keeps having a half a look at G Star, making him guess as Reese yeah, is now all over him. the back of Chris now as well. So Eugenie. Mercedes power on Mercedes power. 
he's really just teasing G-Star you could say at the moment playing with his food indeed as is Reese on Chris the the gap between Calvin and Ant has uh, opened up a bit it's 2.9 it has indeed so I think from 5th down I think might no, it might be confirmed quiet spread the only person that's within a second of another driver is obviously you Joni on G star and obviously Reese on Chris so everyone else is quite spread out so it's only the four cars at the front that are keeping each other close for comfort giving us the entertainment as always which I love to love to see so oh Eugenie getting a bit twitchy I thought, out he did, I thought I did see that I thought I seen Eugenie yeah. with a bit of a twitch but yet again look how close he is yeah he's going to be eyeing up the move on G star into turn one Yep, Dutch or uh, Italian Close on to Dutch. The inside. Italian on Dutch. Ferrari par against Red Bull par. Red Bull against Ferrari as usual, as always. And Eugenie has the to lead. Break as late as possible, Eugenie gets it, but now Eugenie oh. has to try and gap G Star by three seconds to have the win on the road. Indeed. Oh yes, of course. Oh yes, of course. Eugenie's got but that he three hasn't seconds. Got the laps to do it. He hasn't got enough laps to do it. As G Star um, is looking to have a go at him down in towards turn three. You couldn't have went any more English in that it. sentence. <laughs> you couldn't have went any more northern in that sentence if you tried. Uh. <laughs> but there you go. Reese has got past Chris. Chris Bailey out out of the podium. Yeah, Chris Bailey dropped to fourth, but all G to be... He's not exactly, because as long as he stays within the three seconds of Eugenie, he can inherit that third place. True, but I don't think he has, is at the moment. I if you think he'll be just outside of it. Yep, so yeah, Eugenie... he's a second off Reese, so he's going to be outside that three seconds. Uh, G-Star will tenths. probably... Instead of making the move, he'll probably play the safer option and just sit behind you, Joni, inherit the position after the penalty has been given, as long as he keeps you, Joni, within that window. Well, he's gained the se he's gapped a second at the moment, you, Joni, but he has, as you say, he hasn't got the laps. He's got one lap to try he's and gain two seconds. He's got one lap to try and open a three-second gap. Indeed, and Chris is still all over the bat. Is still sort of sticking with Reese, trying to anyway so let's see let's I think Reese is outside the three seconds as well so Eugenie at the moment is currently looking at a P2 if he yep and he's got the fastest lap as well don't forget yes he does so he'll obviously inherit a extra you bonus there. point second fastest lap in LRL by a tenth so him. will you, Joni, finish on 26 or 19? I'm going to take away the tyre thing and we're just going to have a wee focus on you, Joni, to see if he can gap that three second gap on G-Star. He's gained it to 1.8 coming towards turn three. So is he He's able... He's got 17 corners left to go. Yep, just maybe under what, 16 two, now. Just under maybe what, two and a half miles to go on the tra on track. Yeah. Until the, for the end of the race, so. It's currently at 1.6. I don't think he's going to do it. It doesn't look likely at the moment. But he's definitely got the three seconds to Reese. So yep. the, the lowest he can finish is currently P2. Still a great result for you, Joni. Oh, yeah. Especially after making last week. three stops as well. Obviously got the win last week in Spain with the fastest lap. Yep. He hasn't finished any lower than second all season. He's MRC's Max Verstappen. I've said yep. it before, I'll say it again. <laughs> he has got three wins out of five this season so far. And all wins yep. with fastest lap. Yep, Ooh. and he's going to so. add one more to it. He's got 2.2. .2. As we head towards the final 2 .1. couple of corners, the final chicane. Is G-Star going to be closing? Has Eugenie done it? I he don't think, think he I think hasn't. The wins, the, 
the win is going to go to G-Star. He hasn't got the gap. No, nope, he's trying so, so hard on this last lap, but he's not going to have it. So, you journey will cross you, the line in P1 on track, but G Star is going to inherit the race victory. Reese Wickham's going to take P3. Chris tried his hardest, but will take P4 on track. Brilliant result, Cal nonetheless. Calvin coming out to finish P5 and in the second McLaren in P6. With Mercedes, rather. Yeah, Mercedes, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> save you the McLaren behind. So, it feels like such a long race because of the wet. It feels longer than it probably was. Plus, you get True. so engrossed with those four cars in front, you you lose track of what you're saying. Yeah. Double points finish for the Williams boys in P9 yep. and 10. LRL finish in P9. Era voice nearly a lap behind at the moment. Yeah, he's just uh, going through the old part of the city as Bergen's just coming round to enter the castle section. Indeed he is. This he is may being... be outside the points, but I'll give credit where it's due for Bergen, racing tonight on a brand new wheel. Yep, he hasn't done too bad. No, he's... Uh... Obviously, the main, the first thing in racing is obviously you got to finish. You can't yep. win a race unless you don't finish. And he's matter. done the first first thing you need to do with racing, which is finish. So, fair play to him. Yep. So then to go the to so to go across the grid, as Bergen comes through the last couple of corners, G Star Snipes will inherit the race victory after Eugenie's three second penalty. So he will drop to P2, followed by Reese Whitcomb in P3. A great recovery drive from him. Chris Bailey will take P4 with BRD Calvin in P5. Anton will finish P6. A great result for the Mercedes boys, as you said. Xavier will take P7 on track. Jules will take P8. We will go through the rest of the and grid. And it's the two Williams in 9th and 10th. Yep, I think it's LRL was in P9 with uh, yeah, Aero Voice P10. P9, Aero Voice P10, and then obviously Bergen P11, and that's all your finishers. The game has given Ant Driver of the Day, started from last. I will ask you for your Driver of the Day after the podium celebrations. So we have got a multicultural podium. And Dutch, Italian, and El Salvadorian. Not El Salvadorian, uh, Bar Barbadian. I should say. <laughs> Rather than that. So. A very good race to be fair, wasn't it? Came down to tyre management in the end. With hmm. a couple of the drivers at the front. Obviously you, Joni, making the three stops. Get, making the extra stop for the two. Everyone else doing the one. So yep, as we as I said, so it was Jules that finished in P8, LRL finishes in P9, Era Voices in P10, and Bergen finishes in P11, the last of the finishers. And then our D our DNF drivers are Dumbest Hornet, Red Car Rambo, Lobby, Europel, Chatty Duck, Kaiser Soze, BB Hornet, Alex Zajeric, and B17. So then, card. Have you got a driver of the day for me? Um, obviously, you could put Ant in the hat because obviously he started at the back and finished sixth. You could give it to G Star, who had a solid drive from start to finish. Could give it to you, Joni, because of his pace and consistency and almost within the grasp of taking the win. Uh,. I think I'll give it to G-Star because at one point he didn't look very comfortable but then eventually got to grips and found his comfort zone and then even though Eugenie passed him towards the end obviously kept within that window of Eugenie's three seconds so I think I'll give it to G-Star on this one yeah, for my driver of the day. What about yourself, yeah, though? I think um, it's quite hard not to. Or it's quite hard to argue with you, if I'm being honest. So I am going to also agree with you. I'm going to go boring with uh, G Star. But anyway, folks, that is Monday finished for MRC for another week. 
Next up is the both the sport and the comp tiers on Friday. Oh, not Friday, on Wednesday, Wednesday night. Thank you. Comp tier starting at 7 p.m. and the sport tier at 8.45, both UK time times respectively. Make sure to join us for that. But in the meantime, Carl, thank you for joining me on comms tonight. Pleasure was mine. Great to be alongside you. Great as always to be on the, in the commentary box. But thank you for everyone that has watched. That was a classic race as we thought. But good night, everyone.